Happy Thursday, and thanks for listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast, joined by the great Matt Muehlbach, Mr. Triple Double himself, coming to you live from his office, an office that I've been in a couple times in the last month. Hello, Matt Muehlbach. Mike Luke, how you doing, man? Good to good to be on your show. I love your show, by the yeah, way. Yeah, you know, you might see Bob Elliott right there, and we're going to get to Bob Elliott there in a little bit, because uh, I think uh, Matt's got some pretty good stuff about Bob Elliott that I agree with. But first and foremost, Matt... I'm stoked about this Arizona basketball season this last year in the Pac-12. Tommy Lloyd, I think, uh, realized that he probably needed to get a little bit more athletic, get a little bit more uh, creative on the offensive side, and you certainly saw that in that red-blue game right there. Yeah, you did. I mean, I, you know, from the very opening uh, comments by Tommy Lloyd, I, I love what he said, what's good, Tucson. And then my favorite part was, I effing love you guys. I mean – as as you have ever had a coach that went that far and said that that was pretty amazing but his third comment was what you just said he said hey we really dug in this off season and um i think they did you know i think um and, and oh by the way i i'd be remiss if i didn't mention the fact that he came out and said in his opening comments a red blue um hey we've had a couple of great seasons but it didn't end well last year you know we had one bad game and i thought him kind of embracing that, you know, him kind of, um, you know, acknowledging that was awesome, you know, for the crowd, the team, the community, and then him saying that that's going to be a gift to him, you know, as a coach and to a team. And um, I think it will. I think it made them grind a little harder this summer. I think it made him look at what their personnel roster construction was. And I think, right. as you as you just pointed out, that's what he did. He went and fixed it. Yeah, and that's not an easy thing for most coaches because, quite frankly, a lot of coaches, if you're 61 and 11 in your first two years as a head coach, uh, right. screw you guys. You know, a lot of coaches <laughs> had bad uh, couple right. of first seasons. Um, the fact that he was able to, I don't want to say change course, but adapt a little bit, I think is a real testament to the man, especially, you know, when you're learning on the job and you've been as uber successful as he's been. No, it's a great point. Um and it's hard to do because, you know, I, I remember as a player, you know, hearing criticism and it, it's hard, man. When you hear criticism, it's really hard because, you know, you, 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 you put so much into it. You care so much. You're, you put your, everything's on the line as a, when you college basketball, pro sports, college sports, you're putting everything on the line. And when you hear that criticism, and I'm not saying anybody even criticized Tommy. I don't think anyone did. He was just looking at his own right. roster. But I re I'm just using it as when I would get criticized, I would kind of dig in. You know, I would get defensive. And um, and for him to not even, like, just, just get out in front of it and say, look, you know, let's, let's, as you said, adapt a little bit. Let's change a couple things up. You know, the thing that jumped out to me in that game was, well, the first thing that jumps out to me is how big that team is. That yeah. team is huge. I mean, they are, they look like a pro team size wise, but to your point, the athleticism, the, the physicality, um, just, you know, how strong they are. I think they're a little bit different defensively. I think they're going to really get up in people um, and the depth of that team. He went out and got a lot of good players. Yeah, last year's team, it was weird because they I th thought they really outperformed expectations, but at the same time, you didn't really feel that they had a big margin for error because they didn't have players that could make plays off the bounce. I mean, you look at all the best look at all the best U of A teams, your final four teams. I mean, heck, you played with the, one of the best ever, uh, probably the best ever in Sean Elliott. You look at yeah. 94, you look at Damon and Khalid. 97, he got four different guys that could make plays. 01, obviously, Arenas, Gardner, uh, Jefferson. Last year's team didn't have anybody that could make any plays off the bounce. I mean, Kerr was essentially, Kerr had 11 shots, I believe this stat was 11 shots in the paint um, wow. the entire season. <laughs> 
that's really difficult, Matt, unless you've got, uh, you're the Golden State Warriors and you got five Steph Curry's running around out there. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And they, they, and they got so many early looks or, or, or in the season early on, especially uh, really throughout the year until that last game, but they got them because their bigs were so good and people, you had to help on the bigs. You had to, you know, you had to think about the bigs down low, but if you can go one-on-one -on -one with the bigs, I mean, as you said, you got to have guards make plays. And um, you look at the three guards they have out there right now, and really four guards, um, you know, with Love and and um, Boswell right away. I mean, right. Love can shoot. They both can shoot it, but they both can make plays. And then I think Bradley's going to come off the bench. He's going to be, a you know, just like a firecracker off the bench. He gets to the rim. Have, do you see, Matt, do you see him having a little bit of a JT type role? Like, you know, when yeah. Baby was here where yeah. you're good enough to start. You're probably going to have to wait your turn a little bit, but either way, until you're a starter, you're still going to be a dynamo off the bench. I think so. I think so. And I love, he's a change of pace guy, right? And you get, you come off the bench, um, get up and down. He's going to, I think he'll defend at half court. Um, he gets, I think if I look at the stat sheet, I think he took the most free throws of anyone on the team in the red blue. Um, you know, I think he's going to get to the free throw line. As you just pointed out, you know, Kerr and Ramey didn't really get to the line. They were really right. good players. But when you mix and match the lineup that they had with them out there, it may not have been the best fit. And uh, and then, wow, K.J. Lewis. Um, I know his dad here in Tucson, great, uh -huh. great guy. Um, wins the dunk contest, blocks. Who, I don't know who shot he blocked. He threw somebody shot into the first row. Um, he's going to be a stud. I love him. He's got I really a little Hassan in guy. him. He's got a little Hassan yeah. in him, that quick twitch type. Yeah. Thing. I were texting about this a couple days ago. I yeah. think Hassan is probably the most unique athlete I've seen at the U of A in that there's a lot of art. There's a lot of a lot of Richard <laughs> Jeffersons, you know, that can take off. But Hassan was so quick twitch that se that first that second leap. There's some of that with KJ Lewis. Plus, they're plus they look kind of similar as well. Yeah, same same size, like you said, the quick twitch. I think it's interesting. Hassan is like or Hassan was like a uh, like you said, so unique. There's no player like him, um, right. and that's come through the U of A. I when I when I thought of KJ the first time I saw him, I almost thought of like an Aaron Aflalo type guy, right? Mm -hmm. Just a really tough stud, two guard, three guard that can really defend, you know. And Aflalo became really good offensively, but I like the Hassan Adams Aflalo a little bit. I I can't wait to watch him play. I think he's going to be. Um, you know, we'll see, obviously a freshman, I haven't seen him shoot a lot. Um, but I just, you know, he's, there's a lot to like about him. I think there's a little bit of a, obviously Matt Muehlbach who's covered a lot of UCLA games. I think there's a little Jalen Clark in him too, from UCLA and that you kind of yeah. start, you start out the first yeah. year, you probably get five to 10 minutes per game, defending, being super athletic, right. get into the rotation that second year, by the third year, you're an all American type dude. Yeah, and the offense will come, right? Uh, the uh, offense uh, doesn't will come. It, it doesn't stand out initially, but and I like you know our our guy Kelvin Efon, right? Uh, Texas guy, football right. guy. I think KJ's got a little Texas in him. Football, I think that that that's going to look good in the Big Twelve in a year, right? That really will. Now we're going to get to that in just a second here, but first, Shady Rays. You might look at Matt Muehlbach and say, "Man, anything Matt Muehlbach touches is cool." <laughs> you are correct. Anything that I touch is not cool. That's why I need cool things to help me out here. That's where Shady Rays comes in, exclusively for our listeners. Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to shadyrays.com and use code PHNX for fifty percent off two plus pairs of polarized, not polarizing sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over. 250,000 people. Some people need a little bit of help to look like Matt Muehlbach. That's what we're here for. Check it out. Shady Rays. <laughs> and one other thing right here, Wink. All right. Now here's the deal with Wink. Wink, a seltzer with a wink of THC available in <laughs> 2.5 milligram or five milligram cans. You can find wink right here in Arizona. Look for wink at the Sunday goods dispensaries in the Valley and Botanica dispensaries in Tucson. They're now in 12 States nationwide and even recently launched online ordering and home delivery to about a dozen others to find the latest way to get your hands on. Check out drinkwink.com. All right, Matt, mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about Keisha Johnson a little bit. Um, I'm of the opinion, listen, Azulus Tabellus was a fantastic basketball player. There's no doubt about it. You don't average 20 and nine at the U of A without being good. 
But there were times, though, throughout his career where it didn't really look like he necessarily embraced the big moment. And some of that's just personality wise or, you know, the toughest dude in the world. Keyshaw Johnson, I know he averaged seven and five at San Diego State, but like we always talk about, San Diego State, and this is with all due respect because they're really good, they play the first one to 40 wins. Whereas yeah. with Tommy Lloyd, the first one to 90 wins, I think he's going to get 14 and eight just by running the court this year, Mr. Bob Elliott. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And in fact, no one's been tougher than San Diego State physically in the last five years in San Diego State. Um, right. That the Mountain West, people don't realize probably on the East Coast and throughout the country how tough the Mountain West is. That's a that's a gritty league. Those are right. a lot of players that maybe didn't have whatever it took to be start out in the Pac-12 or the Big 12 or the Big 10, but they're gritty. They get a lot of transfers. Eddie House's son is there. They get defensive guys yeah. in that league. Um, Kashad from my – kind of where I grew up really close to my, my high school, Bishop O'Dowd. I think he was San Leandro. I knew um, you were going to get the Bishop I've, O'Dowd reference in there. I got, I got to throw that out. I got to right? throw that out. But uh, you know what's interesting to me about him in the red blue? Huh. Um, he took the most threes of anyone on the team. Right. And I didn't know, I didn't know he kind of had that jump shot. He can shoot it a little bit. And mm -hmm. so as good as Balo, I think is Balo looked good in that game too. Right. Um, as good as Balo is going to be this year, um, Kishad's going to be a great compliment to him. A tough guy, tough defensively, rebound guy. I love I, I agree with you on the stats, but he's also going to make some shots. You know, transfer to Balo real quick. There was a play early on in that game, the red blue. He got the ball under the bucket. Keyshawn was right next to him, right next to him. And I thought he was going to, you know, contest the shot, maybe block it. Balo just literally moved him out of the way, right. rose up, dunk it. That guy is, is a man. I mean, he is, he is a man right. in, in college basketball. He's going to be fun to watch this year. He's one of the largest people. He, now, he's not the biggest player probably per se here, but he might be the most physically – you stand next to him. I've seen him at a Jamaican yeah. restaurant off Fort Lowell many times before. It's very good, by the way. Um, he is a he is a massive individual right here. He's got, I mean, when yeah. you stand next to him, it's like standing next to like an offensive tackle, only he's like three inches taller. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, he's massive. And and as we've pointed out, like his skill level has developed. Tommy Lloyd's done an awesome job on his skill level. Um, right, left-handed, you know, great post moves. His free throw looks different this year. It looks like they've been working on his, on his release and how he's holding the ball. Um, so a ton of work, man. That guy's working hard. He, he looked good. I was really impressed with how good he looked. Now let's get to Kylan Boswell here. Now you did a little bit of an interview with uh, Anthony Jamino. What does that guy know? This fly by night <laughs> journalist right here. What are your thoughts? <laughs> what are your thoughts on uh, Kylan Boswell this season? What are you looking for out of him? You know, I was watching the red blue. I was, I was just wondering how he would run the team. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, being a point guard is a tough position. I came in as a point guard. I played a lot at two actually at, at Arizona, but it's such a hard position. Like, like there's so much intuitive play about it. You've, you know, point guards these days are different also than they were. Like I grew up in the era before Jason Kidd and he was the ultimate, you know, pass first, play defense, run the team. What area of the country is Jason Kidd from? Mount oh, Hill? yeah, Al Alameda, California, baby. St. Joe's High School. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember watching him in, like, seventh grade play. Um, Did you know then? I People, like, we like we knew when he was in eighth grade. Like, he yeah. was he was kind of the size he was in the NBA in, like, when he was in eighth grade. He was that size. Yeah. And, and just, a, you know, like, smartest guy in the world in terms of playing basketball. But I think I liked how Kylan handled himself. You know, I thought he handled the ball really well, um, you know, against pressure, against love and against Jaden Bradley. Um, and I think I think he's going to find his his niche, you know, like like I thought, you know, like you think back to last year, Kerr did a great job just running, playing fast and running that team fast. I think he had some weaknesses, but um, I think Kylan's going to be a, a really balanced guy. I think he's going right. to understand how to run the team. He'll be really physical on defense, and he, he can get his own. He can get to the rim. He can shoot it. Um, I'm really excited to see his development this year. You know, it's weird with uh, people in the end or people now. Uh, everybody looks and says, "Oh, well, this player's off to the NBA. This player's off." I look at Boswell, and and this is no slight to him because he's obviously he's an awesome college player, and he's going to make a lot of money. 
to quote Steve Rivera, I would love to have his future. Um, <laughs> but he also doesn't feel to me like the player that is like that two and done first round pick uh, type guard. I mean, we've seen those guys come through here, you know, your Bibbies, your, uh, your Jared Baylesses, guys like that. He doesn't have nearly that type of feel to me, but there's nothing wrong with that either. He just doesn't yeah. look like the point guards that you see in the NBA now. Yeah, I mean, and, and still, you know, without going into it, he's young, right? We know how young he is. Um, he's he still has a lot of time just to get experience, and you know, right. he, didn't, he got a little bit last year, but not a ton. So I, I think he's got time. I think his development, though, if he just develops the right way, which he will, I think. I love his personality too. Like he's yes. got a really calm demeanor. Um, and I told your your guy AG Anthony Jamino, I said, you know, the fact that he made that USA team. That says a lot. I mean, it's right. not you and I talking about how good he is or Arizona fans or Tommy Lloyd. It's a it's a it's a third party coach right. that has unbiased that wants to take the best players overseas or wherever they're playing. And they pick a guy like, you know, Boswell. They're saying he's a he's a really good player. Right. Now you might say Matt Mulebach, he can get into all the games because he's Matt Mulebach. Not all of us are Matt Mulebach. But Game Time is here to help out people like us that are not Matt Mulebach. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code PHNX for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code PHNX for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price is guaranteed. Maybe you're like Matt Mulebach and you think Taylor Swift is the GOAT and you think nothing of Linda Ronstadt's uh, singing ability whatsoever. <laughs> and, you want, and you want to be able to get in their last second check out game time right there. Maybe you'll even see Matt Mulebach at the Taylor Swift concert. By the way, Matt Mulebach, big Taylor Swift fan. This is correct, is it not? It is correct. I was looking for my God, I can't find it. My my Taylor Swift uh, pin bag that my daughters gave me. Are your daughters um, when, are your daughters Swifties? I assume. Look, when you have a seventeen and a fifteen year old, you're going to be a Taylor Swift fan. And I, so I was I was there way before Travis Kelsey, and now. My worlds are colliding because, as you know, I'm a Chiefs fan. I'm originally from Kansas City. I've got, you know, my sister who had Kelsey's glove from the uh, from his four touchdown Monday night game last year, and so it's all coming together. My real question now is: Is this real or not? Because let's be honest, it's starting to look like it's not real. Well, uh, it looks. Yes, I'm, I'm of the okay. same opinion. I, I was watching a, a buddy of mine texted me, not about not you even, and he said. All right. He says, is this just bogus? Is this just PR? Because it's starting to feel like <laughs> nonsense now. I'm it, kind it, of the same boat that you are right there <laughs> now. The fact, the, fact, the fact that he wore a John Mayer t-shirt on his podcast makes me think that this thing's starting to feel a little, a little off. The, the or a, thing, little, a little too perfect. A little too perfect right there. But you know yeah. what? We will uh, go with it. But you do agree, though, that Whitney Houston is the GOAT, hey. though. Yes, she's the goat in terms of singing. And you and I did have a fun exchange, Linda Ronstadt versus Taylor. But Taylor is one of the best songwriters of all time. And I am a Swifty. Um, and by the way, you know, I was doing the Pac-12 tournament last year. Mm. And I was, uh, I was, you know, saying, I was basically in the middle of talking about these teams, throwing out Taylor Swift titles, Taylor Swift right. th songs. And now I see guys like Rich Eisen doing it, everybody on ESPN it, doing man. it. Come on, man. They're a year late. Yeah, dude, seriously, man, you're a year late, dollar short. Nice try right there. By the way, I have seen, uh, I actually have seen Linda Ronstadt in concert, but it was in an opera. Really? Right there. Oh, it, no, that's it was, range. Yeah, so it, it was amazing. That's why, range. that's why I get she doesn't write her own songs. I totally get all of that. But when you can, when you can, the, the range that she has, especially in opera, I will send you some yeah. opera. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite, wanna, it's quite amazing. Um, I want to hear it. Yeah, it's, it's very good. All right, Pella Larson here. Let's talk a little Pella Larson. Um, here's where I'm at with Pella Larson. Pella Larson is a, a very, very good basketball player. I think he is going to be very well augmented, though, by the players on this team because, let's be honest, Pella's, Pella's a very good defender. He's really strong. He's not a weenie at all. He can finish around the hoop. Pella also can't dribble. You've got three guys now that can dribble that make his life a lot easier, a lot easier in that realm there. Yeah, I mean, he he. I don't think he's going to have to make a ton of plays off the dribble, right? And you saw it in the red blue. How many times did he get open looks? He's going to get open looks. I know he's working like crazy on that jump shot. He shot forty six percent as a freshman. Um, look, I, who I I think like 
and I, I know we get sometimes we get carried away on comps, but the kid from Denver, the kid that went to Kansas, that plays in Denver, you know, Braun is a is an incredible young player, and 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 I say this because Pella has a little bit of that in him, yeah, or actually, he has a lot in him. The athleticism, the physicality, you know, a guy that didn't really start as a as a great like perimeter guy necessarily. He's more of a role player, a kind of a kind of a bigger taller, stronger KJ Lewis, what we were talking about earlier, right? right. Or, a, or a Jalen Clark. And I think if Pella, and I think he did that really the second half of the season, if he just focuses on that defending, I mean, getting to the rim, you know, dunking on guys and making open jump shots, he's going to have a, a monster year if he does that. Yeah. And the thing about him too, is that defensively, he can bring a lot to the, he's a jack of all trades. He can guard a four. He can guard a two. He's really an underrated athlete in that yes. realm. I would say the yeah. one thing that's different, a little bit different about him than uh, Christian, uh, uh, Christian Brown, it still should be Braun, uh, but whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He, he's got a weird slow release shot. So he's never going to be able to come off screens and do the Kyle Korber type stuff because it's right. this weird set shot. But other than that, he's got a lot of stuff that you look at and you're like, man, those are winning yeah. basketball plays. And the thing about it too, if he's your th fourth option on offense, you're more than okay with that. Now, if he's your second or third, it's probably going to be a yeah. problem. But if he's your fourth or fifth, yes, please sign me up for two. You know, there's, I mean, I'm not saying he's as good as Judd Bushler. Judd Bushler was an awesome player I played with. Um, you know, 6'7", six, 6'7", seven, six, seven, played in the NBA 13 years or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But Judd was not a three-point shooter when he got out of, of college. He was right. he played the four and the three. He right. was just an incredible sort of defender, rebounder, strong, tough, all those things we just said about, about Pella. And right. athletic, too. He could, Judd could guard anyone. And I think if Pella gets to the point where he can really learn to guard any player, you know, one through five, basically. And he did a lot of that last year, but even get better at it and better at, you know, keep working on that jump shot. If you get into the next level, whether it's in the NBA or in Europe, that's all you do as a pro. You, you shoot jumpers all day long and he can, he, I think he's going to become a good shooter. All right. Now yeah. let's say you're a chiefs fan like Matt Muehlbach and you're saying to yourself, where can I bet some of this? We're going to get to that in a second here. Sign up for BetMGM. Use bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM sportsbook wager through the BetMGM sportsbook mobile app. Of at least 10 bucks. you will receive $200 instantly in additional winnings regardless of your wager's outcome. Check out the show notes for details. Matt, this is where it's nice to be a Chiefs fan. Pat Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes plays like garbage. Um, and you're still able to always get a win. It's uh, Watching him is remarkable what he can do and you can, he can bring a D minus effort or a D minus effort by his standards. And you're still going to get the win, Matt, you're blessed. You deserve to have the best things in your sports <laughs> life. And that's what you're getting right there with Pat Mahomes. Although everyone's mad at him because he didn't cover the other night by sliding at the one yard line. Right. Yeah. I mean, well, he had a lot. Hey, by the way, I got to tell, cause Brad Alice was all over me. You took a picture of my office. I had no yeah, chiefs. I had no he Chiefs was. anything in here. Like, what was going on? But look, I do have my Eric Hosmer. Where is that? My Eric Hosmer running the, the home plate against yeah. the Mets in the World Series. So I have a little bit of KC stuff up there. But I'm working on the Chiefs stuff. Tell tell your boy, Alice, I'm working on that. Being a Kansas City fan uh, for the longest time, you didn't have really – you didn't really have anything. The Royals were always poo. The uh, the Chiefs um, weren't going to really – lose in the, in the playoffs every year under Marty Schottenheimer. Lose to the Jets 9-6 with Trent Green and Herm Edwards. You <laughs> actually had a nice little run here this last 15 years or so, Mr. Muehlbach. How, well, how about my run with my Warriors? Of course, I grew up – you know, I grew up in California and I already yeah. been a Chiefs – Royals fan, but my Warriors is what I went, went to as a kid. The Warriors with Steve Kerr and Q and the, all our guys, Andre Iguodala. Um, what a run they're still having. It's not over. So I had that run. I had the Royals and now I got the Chiefs. It's It's been a good, it's been a good run, you know? And you know what? It's uh, like I said, in the Warriors seasons up, Matt Muehlbach is, Matt Muehlbach is the awesome fan. He is the pessimistic fan. That <laughs> are for his team. Matt will, here's what'll happen. This I'll get season. down on my team. I get down on my team early. Guarantee you this. Here's the deal. So after 10 games, the Warriors, Warriors will be nine and one. And Matt will say, 
Mike, I'm just not feeling this team, dude. Like I just, <laughs> I, I don't think they have it anymore. Um, you know, maybe Steph's starting to wear down. Steph will go for 68 the next game and say, yeah, but you know, uh, those were fluky <laughs> shots. Matt is that type of fan, right? Hey, there. hey, who was the guy who predicted they beat the Lakers last year? I was wrong. Um, yeah. You were right. I'll give you that. I'll give you credit. You were. You were and, I did say Boston would beat um, Miami, and I, I think I owe you a burger at. Uh, well, I owe you a double cheeseburger. Oh, right? a Del Taco cheeseburger, my friend. I went to Del Taco today, by the way. I felt very you good did. about my decision. All right. Um, by the way, did you see? Uh, were you able to see when uh, when the four when Channing Fry, RJ? Bibby and um yeah uh, Miles were there. That is yeah. one of my pet peeves, and it's not about Tommy Lloyd or anybody, is that the way coaches don't let players really talk to the media unscripted anymore. Lute Olson yeah. to me was the absolute master at that. And it shows because all of these guys, whether it's yeah. RJ, whether it's Channing, your guy Tom yeah. Tolbert, yourself, right. obviously, I can keep going on and on. They all are all throughout the basketball world and they're hot commodities because they're entertaining and they know how to talk to the public. I, it, it's funny you say that and, and also attribute it to loot. Like it's because it, loot was good at it too. Um, now he didn't like, we, Hey, we talked about being defensive. Loot would get a little defensive now mm -hmm. and then, but you're right. He let his guys, he let his guys go. He let his guys talk. He talked to him about, you know, being a good, a good citizen and doing the right thing, but he was, you know, he had personalities on his team and he let him, he let him be that. Um, but how crazy is it? If you're an Arizona fan and you sit back, I would rank Arizona number one in the country right now in X players in the media by a mile. I, I don't, I don't even think it's close. Like it, I'd love for someone to tell me who's second and I'll, I'll look at it. But when you think of, first of all, RJ, who's better than RJ? Like there's nobody, and then RJ and Channing together. Um, Steve Kerr, before he be, became a coach, as you said, Tom Tolbert, one of the best radio shows in the country. Uh, Corey Williams, you know, is doing ESPN right now. The, the list goes on and on, and um, it's really incredible what those guys do and how they come back. And and you know, they didn't play for Tommy. I mean, they've been what three coaches removed from from Tommy Lloyd. Um, Right. And they come back and and they they like like Richard said you know he's going to back the A that's what he said. Richard is going to hey, back. I just say back the A. Back the A, my friend. But back, back the A movement is strong. By the way, I was at the gym today, <laughs> and <laughs> I had somebody yell out back the A across Vasa Fitness right there. The movement is strong, Mister Bob Elliott, and it's hey, only getting stronger. Hey. I know you like to work out, right? Because I, you know, I, I've I've been around you. You, you know, you, you got a little you got a little frame up top. What? I, when are you going to go to the tank top like McAfee? You need a tank top on this podcast. I'm going to oh, see man. Mike Luke in a in a tank top. No, that's a terrible look for me, Matt. Because first of all, I am whiter than this shirt right here. Second of all, <laughs> I will never go for the fake tan. The fake tan that, doesn't. That's true. That's the true. Fake that, tan that's does true. nothing for me. I'm going to maintain my ghost-like reflection for as long as I can right here. Yeah. Your, your, your trademark is the flat build hat. That's your trademark. The flat build hat. Frank Caliendo enjoys making fun of it when he can, but uh, I'll take it. By the way, Frank Caliendo, you know Frank Caliendo, right? I do. He was at the Red Blue last year. Was he there this year? Yeah, he's been on. Uh, I actually text back and forth with him all the time. He's a big fan of Dylan Anderson. He was his uh, uh, yeah. Pop, Pop Warner coach. Fun stuff. Yeah, he Fun. was he was awesome last year. We had him on the Pac-12. He did his he did his. I think I had him do the Madden. That was my he's, first. He's going to do a Mike Luke impression for my birthday coming up here, which I'm <laughs> terrified, awesome. but I'm also <laughs> optimistic about. All right, let's let's talk a little bit about the conference here, Matt. Um, I know that uh, yeah, we had to bring you kicking and screaming to the Big Twelve, but now you're all in because I I get it at the same time that you know you're a West Coast dude, you're nostalgic, but I think also at this stage in the game, it's this was the best move for Arizona going forward. And not only was it the best move for Arizona, it's just from a competitive factor. And um, they produce some of their own stuff, which means maybe a little more Matt Mulebach. Just hey, saying, just saying. hey, we'll see. We'll see, right? Hey, look, I'm I'm with you. I mean, I'm a Pac-12 guy at heart. I grew up watching it. I grew I played it. I've I've been, you know, with the Pac-12 network, but you know, with the circumstances they went the way they were, Bobby Robbins did a great thing for the school. Um, he was he was out in front of of stuff. I think he was he wanted to be in the Pac-12 if it continued. 
Um, and he decided to make a move and I applaud him for it. I saw him at the football game Saturday, told him that, and, you know, it's a tough time. I mean, I feel like this is kind of the last dance for the PAC 12. However, you know, as, 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 as I said, I am a chiefs uh, Royals fan. I have big time uh, family back in Kansas city. Um, you know, I've married into a KU family. Mm-hmm. Um, my father, my, my former, my deceased father-in-law played, he was a running back at KU. My brother-in-law was a defensive end at KU. I got a lot of big 12 connections. So it's, and by the way, it's the best basketball conference in the country. So by a mile and let's be honest here. The one thing that was annoying to me about the PAC 12, and you know, this better than anybody, there was a lot of state, a lot of, a lot of gyms, and I don't want you to get into trouble here. So this is me saying this, but there was a lot of stadiums. There's a lot of host pavilions that don't have many people in it. When you go to the big 12, you're going to have 15, 18,000 people in there or 15, 18,000, however many they hold. It's going to be a raucous environment where hopefully we have people looking down at Matt Mulebach calling. <laughs> right I need that. I need that. I love that. That would be fun to to, to obviously cover it and cover like you said different places. I haven't been to. I've been I've been to Fog Allen, um, but I have not been to uh, to K State, to Iowa State, to Baylor. Um, I don't think I've been to TCU. There's a lot of them I haven't been to. So um, I'm I'd I'd love to do it. it, it I'm I'm looking forward to doing that. All right, Matt, before we sign off here, oh, it's BetMGM Parlay pick. Who do the Chiefs have this week, my friend? Who do the Chiefs have? Do you know? Uh, Shoot, I should know that. Oh, Vikings. They're at Minnesota. All right, Vikings at Minnesota. All right. Kirk Cousins in a big game is not going to win that game. Um, I am going to (laughs) absolutely go Pat Mahomes in this game. Matt Mulebach, do you want to pick against your Chiefs and go with the and ride with Kirk Cousins against Pat Mahomes? (laughs) And I'll take the over. What say you, my friend? Oh, I like I like the Chiefs on the right. I think the the Taylor Swift era right now has got them fired up. They're actually they have like new life right now. So I'm kind of I'm going with the Chiefs. All right, I'm going with the Chiefs as well on that. Do you think the Chiefs repeat this year, Mr. Pessimistic Fan? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I know. So you're going to get – now, how many, so. let me ask you this. How many titles does Pat Mahomes run away with here? You're going five? Going five. So we're, you're talking about what he's going to end then is easily one of the two best QBs of all time. I agree with that. And I'm a yep. big Joe Montana fan. It took me the longest time ever to admit that Brady was Who better did? than Montana. Yeah. But – Ch- yeah. Kansas City Chiefs, great Joe Montana, by the way. That's right. That's right. He had the one year. <laughs> right. All right. Now, real quick before we sign off, one other thing, Splash Sports. All right. Here's the deal. Head to SplashSports.com slash PHNX to join in. We'll have different contests coming out. So we are stoked to compete with and against you. Be sure to click out the link in the description. And here's the deal. Head to Splash Sports, link in the description, deposit cash to get started. It's just $5. PHNX Weekly NFL Picks X Contest, Survivor Contest. The more you enter, the larger the prizes. Mr. Matt Mulebach, we always appreciate your time. And after I'm done at an F45 class, I will probably come by and bother you next week, my friend. Mike Luke, come by anytime. I got to throw out, I do want to throw out Bob Elliott, the, the, the original GOAT from the U of A. He was a he was a two time academic three time I think academic All American. He's in the academic Hall of Fame in college. His jersey should be retired at the University of Arizona. Just throwing that out. I've been saying this from day one. The two jerseys that are not up in the Raptors that one thousand percent need to be up in the Raptors, and we can talk about anybody else. Bob Elliott, Damon Stoudemire, those two, yes. those yes. need to be up there. But like you said, Bob Elliott, though, when you look at his resume. <laughs> When you look at what he was able to do, still the second all-time leading scorer in school history right there. And there's been a lot of really great four-year players that have come through here. Not just the one and right. done. Weren't able to eclipse that. Couldn't agree right. with you more. Plus, he's a good dude. He stayed in the community. By the way, I yeah. I, have, uh, I scared him one time with some sports knowledge. I saw him on the, uh, the mall, and he doesn't really know me or anything. And I yelled out, Big Bird! And yeah. then uh, I said, Renaissance High School in the house. Believe it or yeah. not, I'm not from Detroit. I did not go to Renaissance High School. He looked around immediately and he says, how did you know that? <laughs> Great dude. And like you said, community guy in Tucson. Hey, thanks for having me on, Mike. Right. And uh, uh, right. enjoy uh, enjoy the Coliseum. All right. He's the great Matt Mulebach. I am merely Mike Luke. You've been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. We all silly like the mayor. 